episode, if everything goes well, the Odyssey is getting wheels, tires, it already has kind of the new front end, so we'll finish that up, and it should be the shred monster of the century. That's the goal. Uh, and we have new gearing for it to compensate for the larger tires. We got a very exciting package from our friend Mike over at Moto Mule. We sent him the hubs, which were a Subaru bolt pattern, and had he, uh, using his CNC mill, um, redrilled them for, hopefully, the bolt pattern of our beautiful, shiny, no limit wheels. Hey guys, it's Mike from the YouTube channel Moto Mule. Uh, Ethan and Edwin sent me a little box here. Hey Mike, here are some stickers for the kids and some koozies for the adults. All right. Uh, sorry, these are not going to the kids. Uh, these are mine. They're mine too. <laughs> not even going to be able to tell with the naked eye the difference in the bolt hole patterns because they are just so close to each other. So I'm actually going to do the machining from the back side. That way I can machine a flat spot for the head of those studs. And then it also gives me this nice uh, surface that I can sweep to find the center of this. The first step in doing this is creating some jaws that I can put in this vise and hold these things. So I'm gonna mount these soft jaws in there, machine them out a little bigger to fit this, and then I'll have a nice secure way to hold that. So I machined a set of jaws uh, that will accept this hub pretty well and hold it nice and snug. And then I also machined some little witness lines in here so I can do my best to kind of line these holes up, the existing ones, so that in the program I can go ahead and just clock the orientation of the new bolt hole pattern. This tool is called a coaxial indicator. And what I'm doing is using it to find the true center of this hub. So uh, the spindle is just spinning the end of that real slow around that boss sticking up. And then I can jog the position of this thing back and forth until you can watch that needle and I'll just jog it around until I get it to stop moving. We'll call this X0, Y0. These things are so good looking. Oh, perfect. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Good job, Mike. So first step, you gotta warm up the metal to make sure it's gonna, you know, stick. And the paint, because it's cold in here. <laughs> the trick is don't leave it on there too long. Uh, I've seen what happens when that happens and you end up with a paint bomb. Yeah. Got the hubs drying. They're looking pretty good. It's a nice gold color. We're gonna go with the red and gold theme on this. We are gonna paint everything else eventually. Because we just, you know, had to paint because they're already sandblasted for us because Mike is the man. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, I'm gonna throw the new belt on. So this is a more heavy duty belt and it's also slightly longer. So it should be uh, closer to the right size for proper belt and clutch engagement. Well, there's uh, good news and there's bad news. Actually, no, it's all bad news. Um, <laughs> opened this up and the oil pump, the belt that runs the oil pump was uh, broken in half. So um, that means it's probably not been getting enough oil for a bit since whenever that broke. 
the reason I said there's good news is because that means we probably understand why it wasn't running right. Because it would start up, run for a little bit, and then just run really terribly. So that's probably because it didn't have enough oil. Hopefully we didn't cook the whole engine. If we did, it gives us an excuse to uh, put a better one in it. I know the circumstances aren't too awesome, but it's pretty awesome you can pull the engine in five minutes on this thing. Yeah, and just pick it up and set it on the bench easily with one person. Yeah. <laughs> How many things are there in this world with this much horsepower that you can just pick up with one person? <laughs> yeah. It's pretty great. Snowmobile engines aren't necessarily like the best in every way, but they're very, very hard to beat horsepower per pound. And per dollar. And per dollar. <laughs> it's the double around whammy. Here, around here anyway. Yeah. <laughs> basically half the day changing the gearing on this thing because it's such a pain to work on. But um, we went from a 13 tooth sprocket on the top down to, I think this is an 11 tooth. So that's what we want, slightly lower gearing. Um, we have the new belt to try out as well. And uh, now I'm gonna make a new chain tensioner because this one was just kind of uh, minimal and it just needs more adjustment. I just made a big slotted plate here um, so that it has more adjustment. So as you move it back and forth in that slot, it'll change the tension. Um, so we can just adjust it and keep it tight. up the strut mounts. We did this front plate here and then we got this plate going on this side here. Oh, it's a lot more stout. You got a lot more adjustment. Next up, the next major thing is to work on the uh, skid plate floor pan thing, um, which is just gonna kind of fill in this area here, all the way back to there, and then have a little, you know, dish in it underneath to protect the steering. Could just use expanded metal. <laughs> back to the old steel store. Yeah. Trying to find a nice, large sheet of something relatively thin for that skid plate. This is the problem with outdoor steel storage. It all gets uh, covered with snow in the winter. wheels mounted yesterday with our Falcon MTs. <laughs> this is the day we've all been waiting for. I mean, you guys didn't know you were waiting for it, but we did. We and, did. Uh, it's gonna be awesome. Just, just look at the difference here. These are the rear tires, but still. Look at the difference. <laughs> Old tires, new tires. Game changer. All right, we gotta throw one of these on. Which is why Ethan spent half the day yesterday gearing it down because. Because, yeah. These things are large. <laughs> That's a monster, monster <laughs> odyssey right there. 
I think it's safe to say those are probably the largest tires that have ever been put on a Honda Odyssey. But first, let's weigh these wheels. And we'll, and we'll compare the fronts and rears. So, we got the MTs for the rear, because rear wheel drive. And we got slightly smaller Wild Peak AT3s for the front, because they're a bit lighter and uh, Should make the steering easier, for sure. Yeah. Either way, it's gonna shred. And these giant tires will help roll over bumps a lot nicer. And we should be able to air these way down and run them at low pressure thanks to the uh, fancy bead technology on the no limit wheels. We got some rock climbing equipment strapped to the garage door. That would be 66 pounds. It's worth it for the swag and for the grip. Oh yeah, this is quite the upgrade from previous send on these bad boys. Yeah. All right, so how much weight did we save? Uh, 11 pounds per tire. That's a huge difference. <laughs> yeah. Especially when you're trying to steer exactly. without any power steering, 11 pounds per tire. Yeah, that's a big difference. That just looks perfectly ridiculous. It's completely absurd. It looks like some of the uh, silly giant UTV builds at SEMA, except like one that actually gets rallied and sort of Mad Max version of it. This one's gonna rally so hard. We have an absolutely perfect approach angle and departure angle. Oh no, it, it clears. Looks like got the steering a lot easier now. Yeah, so with these uh, with these linkages here, I just moved, well actually I moved the front one, but anyway, you can see there's three holes for each one, and I just moved it to the middle hole instead of the outer one, so that makes it easier to steer, and it's just that little bit made it way easier to steer. It's still not, it's still two settings off from the easiest it could be, which is cool. We got the brakes worked out. That piece of brake line is from the Odyssey with this three-way T fitting. And then this one, I just capped off one side of it and used it as a coupler so we could extend that side over to here. Um, some of them are metric, some of them are standard. Turns out the standard one will thread into the metric one, but not the other way around. <laughs> so we have everything we need to rip except for that stupid pulley belt. It's all we need and we'll be shredding. Also look, now it's Flintstone mode. I didn't realize it had a Flintstone mode, but it does. <laughs> we got that belt in the mail. Got the engine back in, just doing the wiring, throwing the expansion chamber. We're ready to party. Dangerously close to rip time. And of course it's raining like every time the Odyssey is ready to rip. Yep, <laughs> you can probably hear the rain on the roof. It's the Odyssey's signature move is be done on rainy days. Yeah, uh, hopefully the rain will like at least slow down a little bit. If it doesn't stop raining, you know, it's still gonna send it. Everything's good to go. It's still pouring. <laughs> we hope everything's good to go anyway. We'll find out. We'll find out very soon.
it feels a lot more comfortable, huh? It feels nice. It's not, uh, either the clutching's off or it's just way too big a tire for it. It's really boggy. I mean, also the engine just might be super tired from, uh, accidentally being run without an oil pump or a water pump for a bit. Yeah, that's, that's an option too. Is the clutch just engaging too quick or is it the engine dead? Uh, yes. So before the gearing was too high, we did lower it a little bit, but it's still way, way too high because with these tires with lots of traction, it can't overcome the grip and just spin them. Before those, those little Brat tires were so, so slick, they could just spin and, and get up to speed. These ones have too much traction. If we could get a much stronger uh, spring for the secondary clutch, that would probably help a lot because um, it would resist shifting up a bit more. And there's like one or two adjustments I could make here now. How's the front suspension and the steering? Um, it's surprisingly good. The tires flop all over the place, as you may have noticed. Yeah. Um, but that's largely just due to all the play in the old used tie rods and ball joints. Um, but it, it, it steers easy enough, and it definitely steers tighter now. The turning radius is, is much better. And again, the tires flopping kind of makes that feel rough, but it's still way smoother over the big bumps. It's just the little ones that make it all chattery in the front. Yeah. Um, but it's awesome. So we could use some tie rods and the steering stabilizer probably. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Um, be really easy to rig up a steering stabilizer. All right, we got a little clutch adjustment. Let's see if we can't make it up the hill now. Wow! Well, that worked. <laughs> That's all she needed. Issues. Uh oh! Well, that's not much of a surprise. Well, you know, it was worth a shot, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, putting 30-inch tires on something made for 20-inch tires could happen to anyone. <laughs> <laughs> anyone dumb enough to try? Oh yeah, wheel bearing toasted. Yeah. Well, those could have been on their way out anyways. So the wheels and tires are awesome. Uh, plenty of grip now, that's new. We've never had that much grip. Um, they look awesome. We just need to make some adjustments to make them, you know, work properly. Uh, the front, that wheel bearing, I'm hoping it was just the nut that came off and then the wheel bearing fried or it wasn't tightened down enough. Um, we'll see, because the other one's still fine. So we'll get that fixed. We'll get some tuning parts for the clutch because I'm confident now that we can make it run right with just clutch tuning because uh, I made one adjustment down there and it ripped really good for a minute. So um, we're getting closer on that. So these no limit wheels are super awesome. I mean, for one, they look awesome. Uh, they're also extremely heavy duty, like way overkill for the Odyssey, which is what you want. And uh, they have special bead technology that um, means you can run extremely low pressure even without bead locks. So that'll be great for 
uh, sand and snow, mud, soft terrain. We can air way down. Um, yeah, to zero. Yeah. He sent us pictures of guys with sticks in their sidewall that went 20 miles without de-beating. Why we went with the No Limit wheels too is they have custom milling options. So we went for the bullets here, but they have really cool ones you can see on their site where they take all this down, they paint them the color you need, get them the size you need. I mean, it is super duper cool. Well guys, thanks for watching. We're gonna go order some parts and pick up a 2JZ. honored to be part of this community of YouTube builders. Uh, it's great that we're all able to kind of leverage each other's skills and abilities and uh, just share with each other. It, uh, it has been a great experience for me. I've made a, a lot of new friends and I'm excited to see where this goes. All right. <laughs>